This is Roger's Audi, yes. a gentleman from the Far East from here, uh, from Kenya, Africa. Mm -hmm. And I just want to lay a little foundation for how he got here, how we got here. Um, was it back in uh, 2016 that you came here yep. the first yep. time? Yeah. 2016, Rogers gets on a plane, flies from close to Nairobi, Kenya, to Longview, Washington, because of a relationship he has with somebody on Facebook, mm -hmm. lands at our pastor's prayer meeting on a Thursday, yep. and uh, the, the gentleman that brought him said, is it okay if Rogers shares a story? And so Rogers starts sharing his story. and. It is a very long story. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in the meeting and I'm thinking to myself, this is a prayer meeting. Why are we not praying? Why are we listening to this man who we don't even know? Mm -hmm. And I'm getting frustrated in the process. And all of a sudden the Lord says to me, you know, Jeff, I brought him here for you. And I'm like, oh no. Mm -hmm that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I had to leave and I asked someone that was in the group, could you have this gentleman talk to me tomorrow? I'd like to get together with him and, and just find it, hear his story a little bit more. Out of that came a phenomenal relationship between Longview and Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a blessing to us, Rogers. I know it's been a blessing to you. Maybe you could tell people a little bit about what you are doing in Kenya that so attracted God's heart that he brought you to Longview. I work with Ambassadors of Hope Foundation. God birthed that uh, vision in me way back in 2007. Uh, in the house, in my home, we are trying to figure out what can we do. And 2010, we kick off. We kicked it off, and um, it was really a journey. And uh, yeah. realized that uh, when God calls you, He doesn't call those who are uh, those who are equipped but equip those that he calls. And uh, it's really challenging down here there in Kenya. We work with uh, children at Ambassadors of Hope. We have a school. No food in Kenya. Uh, kids really struggle. No schooling. No better schooling for if you are not having a good job. And uh, we have so many orphans for reasons that most of you know about the HIV and AIDS pandemic that swept so many people. And still it's going on because uh, either poverty causes some things to happen or negligence because of lack of education. Right. And uh, we are just coming as ambassador of Zop to try to bridge the gap where we want to give these people, our ch little kids, some basic education and offer them food. And alongside, as a man of God, we thought of not only giving them education and the physical food, but also to work on their spiritual lives. Yeah. And so um, when opportunity uh, came my way to come over to the States, I thought of coming over here through a friend that you are saying, uh, Andy, whom I really have m much respect for. I thought he was, he was a pastor having a church because we were talking on that level of uh, pastor and uh, wanted to come to his church right. speak about my ministry because uh, all these things that we are doing it's need some resources and they need some backing in both prayers and and financial so coming over here and then i realized that uh, he doesn't have a church but he's a good <laughs> man that goes to church at father's house yeah. and uh, he happened to know so many pastors in this town and we went to father's house they really welcomed me and uh, through then he, rea he had about the pastors and men of God meeting at Evangel and that's how we, we got to meet with you and uh, along the line God has just done tremendous things. God really used him to bring me to this town yeah. to connect with people and one most important thing to me was to build a relationship. Yeah. I tell you the relationship that God helped me build here has really catapulted us to another level. Yeah. And we've seen God doing just amazing things. Uh, uh, Evangel came on board and Renewal Church came on board and you people be started to help us to feed kids and to help us uh, take care of our teachers and to help us fix our school that was coming down. You know, it was running down and I was like, look at what God can do. So um, I'm just so much grateful. This time of this trip, I just came over again to 
make people know that we have a bigger vision. Yeah. Well, there's a, there is a another part of this too. Yeah. Originally, you started a school for the children, mm -hmm. um, you and your wife Cynthia. Yes. And but Rogers comes from a, a community that's about a little over uh, 200 miles away, yes. where his mom and dad live, mm -hmm. and he th that village is his people. Yes. And he also felt like God was calling him to to walk alongside widows in the community who have no other form of support. Mm -hmm. And so literally your ministry has become a ministry to orphans and widows, which mm -hmm. is a real clear message in the, mm -hmm. in the, the Bible. Uh, the body of Christ here in Longview really doesn't it, culturally, we can't attach to it very well. Mm -hmm. But this whole idea of ministering to orphans and widows is a big part of who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the school is in Nairobi. Yeah. Nairobi and my village is about 300 miles away. Oh, 300, yeah. S so uh, I moved from the village to the city to look for opportunity so that I can feed my parents because my parents are illiterate. Yeah. They didn't go to school and when you don't have school there is no good job for you as a matter of fact going to school was really hard all for me and that's why the idea of trying to you know make ways for those who cannot go to school works out for them so in right. the village my gran grandma was uh, a widow and looking at her life was really not nice to me so uh, when god was speaking to me about these things i was uh, he was trying to remind me about him being the father of orphans and husband to the widows so i wanted to be a hand and feet of uh, feet yeah. of jesus so um just got into it it was for me it was an assignment that god gave me and you know just like god asked um abraham to leave his land to a a, a different world a different land you know he never content with jesus or with god i mean he accepted so i said god here i am make me a vessel make me a tool in your hands to make a change in my community that's how we're working with the widows and um i am telling you it's something good to do yeah but just to know that someone you put a smile through you someone have a smile and knows that there is a life even after they've lost their dear ones yes and, and one uh, of the biggest things you could do for them is provide a place for them to live yes and so rogers let us know that early on uh, that we could build a house, mm -hmm. they could build a house for $800. Yes. So when the message got out about that, I think that there were like something like four or five houses that were built mm -hmm. almost immediately because yes. of that need. Mm -hmm. And so Rogers would have these men come in, a group of men come in and build a house in a day. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden these widows had a home of their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the biggest problems that our widows have is shelter. Yeah besides food so uh, anybody knows that basic needs for any human being is shelter um, uh, food and clothing and now these days we also have uh, medical uh, me me medical or health m me medical health for this widow so basically I was looking at food and shelter because some things we can just sort it out and when I came over here and I shared you guys like you know we want to do those houses because you couldn't right. imagine a house at eight hundred dollars how I mean, I said, yes, it's possible. And for you, it doesn't look like a house, but what we are giving those widows is so much precious. And as a matter of fact, the houses that we give those widows brings back the dignity because there is a story about widowhood in Africa. Uh, they believe that the, the reason why their husband died and, you know, without the question, you, they want to chase you away and take the kids you are not important the kids are important when your husband has gone so when we build those houses for the widows we reclaim they reclaim back what belongs to them yeah and also unite them back to the family so everybody who gave that money it was in a big way that you reunited people with their family yeah. which it's really something very hard to uh, go by in 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 in, in our setup back in africa so um like currently since we came over here the connection that i got here and relationship that I, I got over here was just big 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 that we've done over 40 houses now as we see that's here. amazing ja it's just amazing and there is just that a lady here in the in in all long view that promised to do two houses every year yeah and it's just amazing out of just jumping over here meeting with someone that i thought at the church and 
taking me to a, a prayer meeting and news spread out in this town and everybody, hey amen, I want to work with you. And as a result, there is a team that have come from Renewal Church and Evangel Church all the way to Africa to witness right. what we are talking about. Right. Yes. And we are still calling on more people to come on board. We really want partnership because in that way, we are connecting these people even to the kingdom right. of God. Because these people didn't believe if there is Jesus, if there is God. And now when they get this, I tell them it is not Rogers. It is God that is providing this. Exactly. And now they are getting saved. And now they are praising God. And now they believe that, oh, wow. So there is God in heaven who looked at the orphans and the widows. So you've been, you spent the last 12 years establishing the church, or establishing the school, yes. and establishing the ministry to the widows mm -hmm. and orphans mm -hmm. in, back in Nairobi. So you have plans. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not the end of it. Mm -hmm. I, I know from talking to you that uh, legacy is really important to you. Yes. Rogers, you don't just want to uh, meet the needs today, but you want the needs to be met tomorrow and the, and the year after that and decades ahead. So mm -hmm. you, why don't you, if you could share a little bit about what your plan is for the future, because that's really exciting, but it's also really daunting. That's yeah. a, it's a huge mountain that needs yeah. to be moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Jeff, for this. Um, when God gave me this vision, he clearly told me what he wants. Yeah. And I don't want to live in today. I want to live even for tomorrow, so that this vision continue growing. And when I came over here, we got a surplus. When you are sending us money, I also got money from other, uh, other, other organizations or other churches in East Coast. So we had a surplus. Then uh, when I remembered that we are renting the school that we are using, and Nairobi being so expensive, so uh, I thought of owning our own place to build a school and this, um, the place that we are looking at is down now where the widows are. And now um, what came into my mind is buying a piece of land and trust God if we can put up a school. And we yeah. wanted to do a standard school, a state of the art school in that village. And this is what was in my mind. We want to do this school so that the rich people can bring their kids there and the extra money that they pay help the uh, the orphans in that area and others that we would try to bring in so then we don't have to struggle to raise money to right. help these kids with food because I try to imagine I will not come to, Af to America all through my life. Time comes that I'm now tired and I just want to stay back at <laughs> home. So <laughs> I was looking at how can we create an, our own money that will help these kids continue. Alongside, I want that the school that we are going to build we bring in widows to help there so that we write them check. So then they can raise money from here so right. then they can take care of themselves. So it is something that we, I was looking at. It's going to bring people together, even the youth in that area. They are going to be the guards at the gate. They are going to help with some little job. So it's going to create job opportunity right. locally there. It's going to give education locally there. We are going to have even crops to help the people who don't have food. So that is what we have. We uh, we have acquired the property, two acres, mm -hmm. and what we want to build there is massive. It is in hundred and hundred thousand dollars. I've seen pictures of it. It is. Dollars. It is. Uh, a huge and vision. I don't know where that money is gonna come. Yeah. What I know that God said it's gonna happen. So um, I'm calling people on board to partner with us to help us do that. We've spread it in a way that it can someone can come on board and say we want to partner with the ambassadors of hope. But the plan that I have is that much is so big, but we are looking at partners who want to do what we call adopt a class. Yeah. So adopt a class, you can adopt a class. You named it after your father, after your mother, after your wife, or after yourself. And that one is going to remain, and it's going to be big stuff. So, so then we can continue doing this. It's an, yeah. an opportunity that we are welcoming everybody who just want to join us to be part of this, to make a difference in a life of somebody. Because when you do a class, then in one way or the other, it's going to open opportunity for the widows. Right. It's going to open opportunity for the orphans. And it's going to stand there forever. Such that even if I'm not there, kids, uh, the orphans in that village, the widows in that village will continue having what they need. I think that's, uh, when it comes to uh, Americans getting behind some mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. 
they'll usually get a ho behind something that has vision yes. much faster than they'll get behind something that's just a desperate need right now. Mm -hmm. We will do that, but the excitement about that project will die out quickly. But if something looks like it has some vision for the future, mm -hmm. I think that we're more apt to want to build into that mm -hmm. and help supply the need for that. So my hope is that uh, people will hear this mm -hmm. and they'll say, uh, I'm looking for someone mm -hmm. like Rogers, mm -hmm. who just isn't interested in building his own kingdom, yes. but is interested in doing something that the Bible is really clear about being a mandate for us, which mm -hmm. is ministering to orphans and widows. And you're looking at doing it in a way that has an ongoing mm -hmm. means of support, ongoing. So it's not, it's not just like we, you're calling for these people to build the kingdom. You just want them to help yep. build Mm -hmm. the first part of it so yes. it can take care of itself going yes. forward. Yes. That's a huge vision. Yeah, yeah. And we are planning also to do a chapel there. Yeah. A chapel that can be uh, hired even with other, um, like in Kenya we have so many camping and they, have, they lack where to go to. So when we have a school there with the classes, it can be a very good place for them doing their camping at the chapel right. and using the classes as dormitory and stuff like that. So uh, it's a bigger vision. And I trust God that if he really is in that and if we help us take it off, I know it's going to change a big community there. And uh, I'm also calling upon friends, not only thinking of giving us money, but come down there and put your hands down there and see how right. it's happened. You see, then we build relationship. You yeah. come there, down there and see, these are the videos you are talking about, then you realize then it is different. And I'm telling you the truth is, the life there is totally different here. Right. And um, I'm not really complaining for anything, but I thank God that he made everything to be the way they are. And I will tell Americans are very sweet people. Yeah. yeah. Everything that has happened down there, it has come from the good people that have met here. Right. You know, and we are just grateful. And I know God is taking us a place. You have a big heart in Africa and in, in Kenya and with ambassadors of hope. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, we'll put the information down below about how you can contact ambassadors of hope and Rogers, uh, and really you, you can go there. Mm -hmm. you, there's somebody that's in the process of going there right mm -hmm. now from yes. here. So yeah. uh, you can go there mm -hmm. and you can see it firsthand, but also you can, there are three things you can invest Financially, you can invest with prayer, mm -hmm. but you can also invest relationally too. Yes. And that's something that's mm -hmm. very rare. That's uh, as, as from a, a city serve standpoint, mm -hmm. that's the important thing for yes. me mm -hmm. because I not only support your ministry, but mm -hmm. you've been in my home. Yes. You've stayed with Jody mm -hmm. and I, and you, we know you personally. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's the investment in relationship that's, that's possible with anybody. Mm -hmm. And I know you, you are willing to put your arms around almost anybody yeah. that's willing to go on this journey yeah. with you. Yeah. So thank you, Rogers. Thank you for all that you've done these past 12 years, you and Cynthia, but also for uh, having the boldness to show up in Longview mm. one Thursday mm. and pour your heart out and let God work through that. Yeah. It's been pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm so much grateful to people of Longview yeah. and, and, and Washington State as a whole. You people are just amazing and America is cool place and loving people and I pray that God continue to bless America. Yeah. God continue to bless Washington and people of Longview you have you 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 people are in my heart. I love you so so much and you know sometimes I can't explain how much I love you. Only God knows. And I'm really grateful even for the opportunity to come over here and speak to you guys and God bless you. God do you good and take my love and from my family. Cynthia is so excited that this is happening and kids at high gates are so excited widows in the village are super appreciative for what you people are doing even with the houses that you've done feeding that you've done and it's just amazing we can talk and talk until tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> god bless you <laughs> thank you rogers amen we really hope today's episode was helpful You'll find more resources and content to connect with other community leaders by going to our website, cityservecowlets.org. So, it's been a joy to walk with you, and we'll see you soon.